Hey guys, welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial on Sub-D modeling. Now I know that I had said before that I was going to kind of put this series on hold, but of course, like always, I'm constantly coming across different type of objects that I see in real life that I try to model and try to find different ways to model it efficiently. And in some cases, I come across questions that are asked online, uh, different people wanting to know how to model different things. So recently, someone had uh, inquired as to how to model a certain indentation on a notebook that they were trying to model. So what I have here is the model that this one guy was trying to recreate. This is just the bottom portion of a notebook. And as you can see, he was using the bull object in order to cut the holes into the rear and this indentation here on the front. Now he specifically asked how to model or how to properly model this little indentation here on the front. Now the way he did it, of course you can see, is that he just took a capsule and used the capsule with the bull object in order to cut out that little indentation there. But you can see that it's kind of producing a lot of triangles, a lot of jagged edges, and he said it just wasn't very pleased with it and he wanted to know how to properly model this in order to get some really nice beveling on it. Now, as I said in the previous tutorial, uh, I'm not using R15. So, of course, I don't have the new bevel tool, which means that more than likely I could possibly use it if I had R15 to come in here and maybe bevel some of these edges and just kind of clean it up to make it look a little more presentable than the way it is now. But even then, I still wouldn't be learning how to properly model it. Uh, whereas just using the bevel tool, just to bevel what I use with the bull, and that's kind of cheating if you think about it. So I'm going to show you how to properly model this because I took the time to go through it and uh, tried to find the most efficient way to model this. So usually if I'm going to model something like this, I look at the object and I think to myself, where is the best place to start with the modeling? Do I want to start with a cube and do I want to box model it? Now for those of you that don't know what box modeling is, basically you start with a cube, you put the cube in a hypernerve and you just make extrusions, cuts, inner extrusions, and you move the points around to where you want them. And you're basically just starting with a cube. That's the whole idea behind box modeling is you're just boxing in the shape of the object and then you're using the hypernerve to subdivide it and then you just make adjustments from there. So that's one way I could do it, but when it comes to this weird indentation here on the front, that's going to be kind of hard to model to get it to be exactly the way it is now. Now years ago when I first started modeling I probably would have done it that way. I would have started out with a cube and tried to make an extrusion here into the front and just tried to shape out the overall shape of this capsule indentation here. Of course that's the hard way and I don't recommend anybody try to do it because you'll drive yourself crazy trying to do it. So when I look at something like this I say okay where's the best place to start modeling? So in this case, this shape of this indentation is already defined for us. It's half of a capsule, or actually not necessarily a half. It's more like a quarter shape of a capsule. So let me jump in here and let's just position the camera over here to the side. And you can see that this is basically just a quarter of a capsule. It's actually a little bit more than that. But you can see that this is a quarter section here. And if we were to take this and add another one up here, it would just be a round capsule that's been added and that's what was used. So since we have this shape here already defined for us, then why don't we just start with a capsule and put the capsule into place and then subdivide it with the correct number of segments and then just model off of the capsule. I mean that would be a whole lot easier, right? So what I want to do is I want to grab a capsule object and of course we have that as the primitive object and I'm going to change the display here and more than likely we're probably going to have to make some adjustments on this just to uh, get it to the correct size to fit into place Okay, so that looks 
pretty good. Let's go back to a top view. And what I want to do is there is going to be a middle segment that runs right down the middle of this capsule. And what I want to do is I want to line that up with the outside here of the cube that's being used for the base of this notebook. So I want to take the rotation segments down and let's take it down to maybe something like 14 for the moment. You can see there's the middle line that's going and dividing right in the middle of the capsule. And I just want to pull that down to where it sits on the outside or somewhere close. All right, so we'll take that up a little bit and let's take the radius up. Okay, that looks pretty good. And you can see we've got a little bit of a gap there. Now that's not really a big deal to me. We can actually uh, make some adjustments to that after a while. So we'll just leave it the way it is now. Okay, and everything here looks good. That's lined up. We probably might want to take this up just a little bit. Let's check the radius just to make sure that... All right, let's try something like... 3.2 all right that looks good and the reason why we've got the gap up here at the top is because you can see that the center part of the capsule that was used for the bull is actually here whereas ours is here so whenever this guy modeled this bottom portion he didn't have the capsule object lined up like the way I'm lining it up so you can do it however you want to do it, but in this case, I just want to line things up with the edge. So I'm not going to stay exactly to the uh, dimensions of his indentation. All right, now notice we've got a lot of segments in here. So I'm gonna take the height segments down to a value of two. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to only work with half of it. So we're just gonna delete this half over here in a minute because we're gonna work in symmetry just going to make it easier for us. Okay, now for the end segments here, we're going to take this value down to about a uh, value of two, I think will be just fine because the hypernerve is going to subdivide it for us. So I think a value of two will be just fine in this case. And we want to take the rotational segments and we want to bring that down as well because right now there's way too many of them. But before we take that number down, we need to do a little bit of math here. And what we need to do is we need to think ahead and we need to decide how many segments we're going to need. And they need to be the proper amount in order for us to later solve the issue of the triangle to turn them into quads. So let me show you what I mean here. I'm just going to duplicate this. And if you're following along with this, you really don't uh, have to do this part if you don't want to. Uh, this is just going to be an illustration to show you what I'm going to do. All right, so notice down here at the end of this capsule is a bunch of these triangles. Now later on, more than likely, we will probably want to solve those triangles to turn them into quads. Now because we're going to be creating this odd angle of this indentation down here, these triangles may actually work for us rather than against us, and they might actually not cause any problems at all, but I'd rather be on the safe side and just teach you how to solve the issue of the triangle to turn it into a quad. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to determine how much of this capsule we're going to be working with. And of course, like we saw earlier, it's only a quarter section of the capsule that's actually being used for the indentation down here. You can see it's only just a quarter section of it. It's not even really a half. So we know that we're only going to be working with one fourth of this capsule. So what we need to do is we need to determine how many of these rotational segments are we going to need for that quarter section because we don't want to cut ourselves short and not have enough but we also don't want to have too much because remember the hypernerve is going to be subdividing that area and providing additional segments in there for us so we don't really want to go too heavy with it but it needs to be the correct number in order to give us the right amount of triangles on the end so we can solve them to turn them into quads. So I'm going to take the rotation segments down and I'm just going to go to a side view for this. And I need to change the display so we can see this a little better. All right, so just really quick, I'll just show you this with the doodle tool just in case you're having trouble following along. 
So right now, let me take the size down a little bit. All right, so we know that we're only gonna be working with a quarter section. That means this section right in there, that's what we're gonna be working with. And all of this part in here, this is all going to be deleted. None of this in here in the blue area, none of that is going to be used at all. We're only gonna be working with this quarter section here. So we need to determine how many segments we need because right now you can see we've got a triangle here, here, that's one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. Now these here are quads, but we want to be able to solve these triangles. So what we need to determine is how many segments that we need, and right now I don't really want that many segments in there because that's quite a bit, because remember the hypernerve is going to be subdividing it. So let's take the capsule and I'm going to take these segments down and Let's see, a value of 20, no, that's still kind of too much. Let's go with a value of maybe 16. So I think a value of 16 is going to work for what we want. So let me explain why. So let me erase this, and I'll start over again with the doodle paint. Okay, so we know we're only going to be working with this portion here. Now notice that we've got a triangle here here, here, and here. Those are our four triangles. And what we want to do is we want to solve the issue of these triangles to turn them into quads. So if we were to take this edge here, as well as this edge here, if we were to take those two edges and dissolve them, what we would get is two quads. So it would be one, two, three, four. And then we have one, two, three, four. So basically what we have here is the four triangles dissolving these two edges in red to create the two quads. And now we've solved the issue. So a value of 16 in the rotation segments here will work just fine for what we want to do. It gives us plenty of geometry to work with for the curve and the hypernerve will subdivide it, and I think it uh, will be just enough for what we want to do. All right, so with that out of the way, we can just delete that one. And we want to change this one here down to 16. All right, so I'm going to go into point mode. I'm going to take the capsule and make it editable. I'm just going to delete that side there because I only want to work with half of it. I'm going to go into polygon mode. And I want to select these polygons here. And notice I'm just selecting the polygons that don't represent that quarter section. So starting from that bottom edge, working our way up 90 degrees, See the side edge, we want to keep those there. So we're going to do the same here. And if I turn the bottom model off, that's basically what we're left with right there. So we probably want to go into point mode and we got some stray points. We just need to optimize to clean those up. All right, so there is the beginning shape. So we'll go into edge mode and we want to select those two edges there, and then we just want to dissolve them. And now we're left with two quads. So let's throw this into a hypernerve real quick. Okay, there's the beginning shape. Of course it looks a little rough, that's fine though. It'll start to look a little better once we make some extrusions off of it. So we want to stay in edge mode and we want to select this top edge up here. Now before we make the extrusion off of it, Notice that, let's go to a side view. Notice that the axis handle is not perfectly straight. It's angled downward somewhat. So if we were to extrude that edge off, it's going to bring it down at an angle. And we don't want to do that. So in order to correct this issue, what we need to do is, since I'm using the live selection tool, we'll just select that. And we need to go over into modeling axis tab. And we need to change the orientation from axis to object and that will straighten it out for us. Okay, so I'm just going to hold down control. I'm going to click and drag to extrude that out. 
to, I guess maybe about right there. I want to select that edge there. And I'm just going to control click and drag to bring that out to there. And I know we've got a bit of a gap there and that's fine. Don't worry about it. We're going to come back in a minute. I'm going to show you how to solve that. And we've got this edge here. And I'm just going to take this edge and drag it straight out like that. Okay, so I'm going to go into point mode. And what I want to do is I want to fill in this gap. So you're probably thinking, okay, if you want to fill this gap in, let's just use the bridge tool. Okay, we'll go into edge mode, grab the bridge tool and just bridge that edge over. And now the problem is solved, but it's not really solved because now you just put a triangle into it. And if you're trying to learn how to properly model with quads, then you've just screwed up. So that's not going to work. So let's go back into point mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these points here. I'm going to right click and choose weld and the weld tool is going to give us three different options here it's going to say do we want to weld to this point do we want to weld to the center or do we want to take these and weld them to this point here well I would rather weld it to this point here because I want to keep this edge here in line with the other edges so we'll just weld that over to there now the problem is solved now another little trick that you can do, which uh, often comes in handy, instead of going up here and clicking the live selection tool and then having to select and then right click and then go find your weld tool and going back and forth and back and forth, what you could do is just use the space bar. And by using the space bar, you can toggle back and forth between the current tool and the last tool that was previously used. So in this case, we're going between live selection and the weld tool. So all you have to do is hit the space bar and it toggles back and forth. So live selection, hit the space bar to pull up the weld tool. I want to weld these two to the center. Hit the space bar again, it goes back to the live selection. Now these two points here, I think I might want to pull them down a little bit like that. Okay, so what we could do now is work off of this bottom. So let's Grab this one here and we'll pull that down a little bit. And we'll do the same for this one. Take that off to a little bit of an angle. We'll take this one here and we'll do the same with that. So I'm just going to weld that to there, weld that to the center, weld that one down to there. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's turn the hypernerve on now and see what happens. So we'll turn that on. All right, now it does look a little rough at the moment. That's just because we need to introduce some loop cuts in order to help tighten up those corners. So I'm gonna use the knife tool. I'm gonna go into loop mode. And I'm gonna make the cut about here on the outside. Turn that back on, and there's the beginning shape of our indentation. All right, so basically from here, what we can do is just make some extrusions off of this. We'll select these two here, and we'll extrude those up. Pull those down. Now, one thing I want to do is go over here to side view. And because all of these edges, you can see these edges are not really in line with each other. What I want to do is I want to take the size here and I center that out to zero. And that will straighten them out. And then we can just extrude down and that will be the bottom portion of our notebook area there. This one here, we'll do the same for that. You could probably take these two here and weld them together. Go to a top view and we need to select all of those points there and we need to center those out as well. So on the X value we need to Center those up. And 
and we'll select those. Center those up, and there we go. Now we can grab the symmetry object, drag the symmetry in, and there's our capsule indentation. Now it looks a little weird, and the reason why it looks weird is because we need to insert another control edge in order to help clean up and adjust the shape of the outside area here. So what I'm going to do is go to a top view, and if you don't already know, what we need to do is we need to insert a control edge along here. So back to the Doodle tool once again. So we've got this edge right there. And what it's doing is it's helping to provide a point of which the edge starts to be rounded for the end of the capsule shape. But if we turn the hypernerve on, you can see that the rounding actually starts back here. You can see that it kind of, let's see if I can do this with a steady hand. You can see that it starts here and then kind of comes down like this when actually it should be more like this. So you can see it's got a little bit of a dip in there and the reason is because we've only got just this one control edge but if we insert an additional control edge it should provide more support for that uh, corner area there. So I'm going to grab the knife tool and we can be in loop mode and let's just insert the edge about there and what I'm doing is I'm just creating a square shape right there. See the square shape? So we'll turn the hypernerve back on. And now you can see it looks a lot better, whereas before it was kind of looking a little odd in that area there. So what we've done is we've just kind of provided another loop cut to kind of help structure that corner, just to help tighten it up to provide a little more support because that one edge by itself it was doing the job but it just wasn't doing a good enough job so sometimes you may find yourself needing to add an additional edge in there uh, just to kind of help support the first one that's there okay so now we'll jump back over here and that looks a whole lot better so there's our indentation and of course off of this all you would need to do is just go back into edge mode and just make some more extrusions off of these edges here and you know just build the rest of your notebook from it all right so i think that pretty much wraps up this tutorial on sub d modeling more than likely i'm probably going to be making more of these it just happens that uh, sometimes i come across things online or objects that i see in real life and i try to model them and if i come across an issue that i haven't actually solved or talked about in a previous lesson then more than likely I'm probably going to make a tutorial on it. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next tutorial.